People, what's up? It's Kaya. We ain't even about to act like I ain't missed two weeks because I definitely did. But I was on family vacay. Great time. And now I'm back. You know what hurts though? Is so much was happening in two weeks. It was the cabin episode. Been waiting for it. Patience and Coop getting back together. Been waiting for it. Slowly but surely, I said it was coming and then it came. Couldn't even talk about it. My girl's lounge getting trashed. And then the aftermath of that with her and her man trying to work through everything, you know? It's all right though, because this week I said, hold up, hold up. Cause Lexi girl was like, you might want some tissues. You're gonna, want, you're gonna want to prep yourself for this episode here. And I was like, I don't think I'm gonna need it. I, I, I don't be crying like that. I do. I don't be crying like that. From Live Girl's letter to all the Lele moments that were happening with her, her steps with the therapist and with Jor throughout the entire episode, I, I was barely holding it together. And I was like, no. For me, this has been the most an emotional episode has ever hit me. I said, what did he write us, love girl? Lele like, girl, what was mama doing in the past that got us acting like this now in the present? It just came through. It came through. The emotion, they were giving it and I was taking it. So we just gonna go through it. Let's go. We're gonna start with Coop and Patience because they're back together now, as y'all know as I had to watch by myself. That's the fact that this girl was talking about, you know what, I'll even take the stand. Mm -hmm. Just for her to get eaten alive like this. <laughs> I already knew. Patience is not that same girl we originally met. Sometimes they be trying to give like some little inklings that she's getting back to that, that she's trying to get that tough skin back. She is, she's been wounded and she's still trying to put these pieces of herself back together. And for her to have this one person who was such a huge part of damaging who you are when you're already struggling with yourself and now you're up against this person and they have a whole team behind them that's coming to attack you mentally she is not in the place to be getting up on that stand to be able to tell things as as she recalls them to be able to tell things from her point of view without getting frazzled and everything by it when she talking about i'll take the stand immediately i was like no then we have coop who's coming up and i know coop does not want to see her woman in pain she don't want to see her her woman hurting and she's not about to sit here and have her woman not prepared at the same time that's her woman this is who she loves so her vision it could be cloudy and that's exactly what we got. That's also the main reason why Mama Laura's looking at you weary for her being so new to this because she still is. And on top of that, you and this girl who you love just got back together. And she thinks she can manage all of that whereas Mama Laura is looking like not going to want to hit her with the things that everyone else that's coming after her is going to hit her with because of your love that you have for her. And that's the way we see it start out, right? They playing dress up. We got Patience here who's just flirting and that's her problem. You're not taking this serious. If that was Mama Laura prepping her, she would not have been acting like that. But then you see a girl coming out here in these clothes that you don't really see her in on the regular. So you're like, mmm you looking kind of good in your daddy's clothes over there like girl you have this psycho chick coming after you she got a whole team behind her because when they showed miko's house when she was trying to get her i said mm, she got money so no you got this crazy girl who for sure has a good team behind her trying to make you look like the bad guy and this is how you playing out here where you're supposed to be taking a stand to get yourself off Page girl. So after this girl cool comes to the realization once she talks to Mama Laura about taking it too easy on patients and you need to dig deeper and really get her with the questions that they are actually going to be trying to get her with because right now what you're hitting her with is things that they're not really going to try to touch on because we all have this real information, this surface level information. So you need to go deep cut into what was the true buildup of that relationship between her and Miko and what it stems back to where it started from. You met her because she was this ultimate fan. She was this person who had this whole online presence for you where you were now getting all these millions of, of followers who were following your career and supporting your career because she built up this online platform for you that was just making you look better as an artist. So are you just using her so you can put yourself out there and just reach the masses with it because it's something that you couldn't really do on your own or your label couldn't do for you. I love that they brought uh this girl sky up into it too because she was another one who was helping you with your your social media and you know putting yourself out there in a way that you didn't know how to do for yourself and we ain't saying that this is how patience was you know patience we already know was struggling as an artist struggling with her identity as an artist and who she wanted to be the kind of music she wanted to make and getting back to the roots of where she started from but because of that i feel like she depended so much on 
these other people except herself, except trusting herself and speaking up for herself. And that's why she's in this situation now with Sky. It was this person who wanted to help you visualize the actual career you wanted for yourself and how to speak up now for yourself in that way. Where Sky saw you for you, Miko knew you and was infatuated with you as this persona you were putting out there and that's what she was helping to promote she didn't know you on that personal level and that's what they need to understand with my girl being up on this stand because oh because <laughs> look i love patience but patience is very weak and that's why we see when coop goes back to her now with these new questions and diving more into the history of her and miko and then adding sky into the mix she just can't take it she's breaking now she's losing track of timelines of actual facts that happen Happen and when things happen how things actually happen she strayed so much from that girl she used to be this to just be stripped back stripped back to her roots go she, maybe they could take her in to the james's home up in crenshaw too because she needs to get back <laughs> to who she used to be because she has become so dependent on other people helping her other people taking care of her tell her who it is she should be or you know how she should go about doing things side note too because that's another thing that just kind of annoyed me about them getting back together is the fact that they had her, which we already knew. Patience was the one who came on to her after Spencer's party and then Coop turned her down. And then you have her be the one to go back to Coop once again. It, that's my problem is it's always her. Why does it always have to be her when she used to be this strong, confident person? Why is it that when they're officially getting back together now, that Patience gotta be the one every single time that's going to this girl first? I don't want that. Like, I feel like with everything she's going through right now with this trial, it should have been. And because they were both flirting at this cabin, because we knew Coop still loved her and everything. Why couldn't it be Coop who's now going to her? Why we had to hear her be like, oh, yeah, I was about to go check on you. She couldn't. Y'all couldn't just have her go do it. Y'all couldn't just have her go walk over there and knock on that girl door. She didn't want to walk up in there because now we got patients coming to her. You know what? I'm going to just let it rock though. I'm going to take that back because it makes sense. Because even her going to Coop saying she loves her in that moment, it was slightly unsure because you don't know how she's going to react to that. So it's like the insecurity is still there of being turned down, of her not possibly reciprocating those feelings in this moment with you when you're now laying it all out there and telling her you truly want her back and that you're still in love with her. Writers, I'm going to let y'all go with that. I'm going to take it. I'm gonna take it, but I just don't want it. That's the thing. Get a break from insecure pay. The letters, y'all. We gonna we gonna start with the letters before we get to my girl Lele, cause that's just. Mm. It was my man's Jor and Live Girl getting the. They just got a piece of loose leaf. They got they got one singular piece of loose leaf. Spence got a book. Spence. Spence got the original book of Billy Baker's life. Live Girl did part two. Spence got part one. No, 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 no. He loved his kids, y'all. He loved his kids equally. This was so sad. I've never fully been on the Billy Baker train. He has his moments where I like him. He had a lot of moments where I couldn't stand that man. But towards the end of his life, I told y'all, he was trying to, he was making strides to better himself, to better his relationship with those around him, those close to him, his loved ones and everything. So he was growing on me, but then he, he dipped out of here. So I was like, All right, I guess that's it but him here in this episode coming back in the way like he just encapsulated all of who his character was throughout the entire series in this one episode just being with each of them as they read through the letters in the book um <laughs> I was just tearing up. That's why they like built it up because they knew. They said, all right, this is going to be the light one here to get you started, let you know what's kind of coming your way. And then we're going to transition into Spence and his, his story and what he's going through right now. And that's just going to lead you to where it's really going to hit you. Because when I tell y'all live girls hit me, I was like, I'm so glad we're alone right now because we're about to have some ugly tears coming down. <laughs> you know what it was too? It's the way they just gradually transitioned into this episode where they're all going through these these changing periods in their life layla's depression is really hitting this breaking point with spence and his building relationship with dion and both of them kind of helping each other have these realizations about themselves and then live girl her book has been building up this whole time to now it's just taking that next step to putting your your life your father's life his story and everything about him out there to the world and then my man's joy we can't forget about him y'all who up until this point has slowly been 
having these these realizations about himself and this confidence building within him of him being out there on the field and yeah at times he was doing too much not not even long front we've seen him throughout this season being more prominent on the field but never really having this clear path of where he's going from here after he graduates once his football career at GAU is done with you know where is that going to lead for him and we've had people questioning him over the last couple of weeks of following in his father's footsteps entering the draft and everything so to have all of those things from all of those different characters now in this episode come up and it doesn't feel like it's too much going on the way this episode just grabbed onto each of those things and really went full force into helping them through those issues this is up there hey hey you outdid yourself with this one My other ones done got knocked out i'm gonna have to rewatch them and see which one it is this is what got me y'all this this right here sold me because it started here at the top of the episode right and then everything happened we got the letters we got the book we read it through everything we see and billy interact with them and then thinking back to this scene we saw how each of these letters perfectly aligned with where they're at in their lives individually i was like yo her timing she timed that perfectly mama laura mama laura you know what billy had the words that's the thing billy knew exactly what to say but for me it's the fact that she recognized that they were each struggling and that it was now time to give them those letters mama laura, i'm so sorry for down you girl you've been watching the kids and that's my thing i said are you really watching the kids are you really seeing what they're going through right now and she sees it because that's why she said you know what you ain't even graduate yet he said hold it to graduation but you need this right now the drawer his letter billy knew billy said you know what y'all babies right now but i just feel it in my spirit to tell y'all that no matter what it is you go through, just believe in yourself. I know the greatness that you are destined for in your future. And he saw it and he wrote it down. And now they get to live it because they see these letters right here. Right? So my man George going through his. He ain't always been the, the most confident on the field. He hasn't always been the most confident as an individual. And he's kind of been in his dad's shadow a lot of the times. And even after his dad, he's been in Spencer's shadow a lot of the times of, you know, can I live up to that greatness? Can I be just as great? I just be great in my own way. He be fronting. A lot of times he used to be fronting. And now that confidence has slowly been building a lot more. And his personal life has grown a lot. But on the field, it's still something that's slowly building up. I think for him, because right before billy died like the day he died pretty much you have your dad telling you how proud he is of you and how far you've come the things you've achieved and everything and give you his blessing but in the same day you lose him you know so now all of what he told you then has now been overshadowed a bit by his death and you having to process all of that information and stuff and now this is you truly entering adulthood you're going into your college years and building this relationship now with the woman you love you know the woman who you see yourself walking down the aisle with and having kids with and building this future with but now you have the shock reality of no longer having your dad to see you achieve all these things here to see you make these changes to see you grow into this man he's not he's not there for it all in a way you would want him to be there so now to have this letter where he's telling you he's proud of you he let y'all when he called him his favorite twin, I'm like, this man, watch Little Girls Letter say the same thing because these babies are fresh. They are a couple weeks fresh. They are fresh out the cooch. The way they had this man like popping up, it was eating the whole time. And his delivery, he's letting him know you don't have to, everything is not going to be clear as day. Um, you need to take each thing as it comes. The thing too is what I like because in the letters, you could tell that Billy truly just wanted what was best for his kids. He know he didn't live the most perfect life. The love you can feel pouring through these letters, how they built up these characters over the course of these six seasons. The things he would say felt so true to to who he was as, as a father, as a husband and everything. It was so good. I could not. I was just sitting there like, whoever wrote that letter, because we know Billy ain't write it for real. <laughs> whoever wrote that letter gets them they get the entire show because i was just eating up every single word you get jor after he reads that he's having more clarity on what it is he wants he goes to see this man what's his name mac <sighs> i already knew i was like you know what mac don't care mac cares about himself mac cared about himself when it came to kenny he cared about himself when it came to jor you know what y'all because when he first popped up i was like as long as you're getting kenny out the way because i can't stand kenny either 
I don't care. But slowly but surely, I gradually started to realize how he's out for himself, strictly for himself. You just gotta get through this, this championship game, and then we'll be able to come back to this here and see where we go from there. No. He took it, he ran with it, and tried to make my man look bad. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Himalay like her laid up in bed, right? Is she all on oh, her man? Head rested because y'all know she liked to put her head there. Snuggled into him. I was like, girl, hold on. Just hold on to your man. You're watching this interview where he shaded my guy. And he's realizing like, yo, you need to be out for yourself because these people don't have your best interest at heart. You know what it is? It's because my man, he thought he finally had his guy. He thought he did. And the thing is, he did have his guy. He had his guy who is his guy for GAU. That's exactly what it is because that guy is at GAU. So as long as you were there with him, helping him to, you know, better his career and better his his players and better his team, that's where he wants you to stay. He's not looking to you leaving him because then who he gonna have? You're his guy too. That's why Mac over here trying to hold on and shave my man every chance he gets. So Jor, he finally catching on to that. He finally picking up on it. So he takes it, runs with it, goes and see him this is where i gave him props because honestly y'all i did not think he was gonna make his way there i figured he was gonna do something about it like how he ended up back on the interview and was now shading mac putting kenny up you know making kenny look good but the fact that he went to mac first and really spoke out billy did that billy said not my son you are not going to sit here, my son, and take that. You know he had that letter in his back pocket when he went to go see Mac. From now on, we'll be looking out for myself and doing what is best for me. So I'm coming for you. And I was like, yo, who he is today to who we met before? Nah. It has to be all about his career and all about his woman. And them two things go hand in hand. It's about to be crazy. We have the parents. Listen <laughs> not spence and live being parents at like 21 this makes sense but the way i tell y'all transition so smooth we get damn pops up at spence's crib he got his little bag with him live girls there and he going through it right now with his sis and his sis kicked kick him out and everything i was like nah that boy lying because He's like, nah, that boy lying because ain't no way. The way his sister seemed like, yeah, she was on him, but she seemed like a sister who cared. Seemed like a sister who herself had been through so much and she didn't want the same for her brother. He Dion and he's saying, you know, he quit the football team because it's not what he wanted after speaking to Spence. Spence, who's struggling to connect with him. He's struggling to figure out what to do with him, really. as Billy's book. Well, his journal. Here's my thing. The only thing that got me with the letters, cause I was like, all right, letters were in the envelope. It was nice and pristine. They was able to just rip them open because he sealed them and everything. It makes sense why it was so nice and crisp. Spence's book, you could tell them pages were just written. <laughs> Y'all, I said we couldn't make the pages look a little more worn, you know? It's been, it's been a couple of years. He moved in like five years ago or something. The way they wrote this and how it would go from Spence reading through the pages, Billy popping up, talking about now having this, this second teenage boy living with him and his family, and the relationship he had with Spence's mom, Gracie. And seeing how that played in present time with Spence dealing with pretty much the same situation, except this kid, he just quit football, but it's still a complete change that's happening for him, completely out of the norm of what he's used to. And he also comes from a single parent household of his sister raising him this whole time. So there were so many similarities that were taking place. Gosh, this is what I love too, is where he would ask a question, Spencer, and would like, you know, he's looking for the answer. And then it would go to Billy now talking and it's the answer that's coming up. They wrote that so well. So we see him struggling with Dion and how to process now having this kid under your roof. You're still a kid yourself pretty much. Like, yeah, they're adults, but like, they're fresh adults. My man's just turned 21. Spence, who's going through this journal, and he's seeing that it wasn't easy for Billy taking him in and how Billy himself struggled with, you know, how do I manage having this teenage boy under my roof, this teenage boy who I'm connected to in some way through his mom, and, you know, I want what's best for him. I want what's best for his future, and I want him to see that as well. For him now, Billy was a grown man and was having those same struggles. You're 21 and you're still now on that path of going towards that future that he envisioned for you. You know, that future that he was trying to help you achieve. And now you have this guy who's coming to you kind of in the same way. Only Billy kind of forced you to come to him. Billy brought this on himself. This kid, he done brought himself to you. So it's something that you completely weren't expecting. And now you have to figure out how to how to manage that. It's the fact, y'all, that Billy basically noted how 
He had his woman. His woman helped him through it. We got Liv Girl coming out the back, y'all. Liv Girl been there. That's the thing. Liv Girl been there the whole time. But the way they had her come out the back in this moment here to come up to him and grab his hand. And she was like, Spencer, you don't have to figure it out tonight. And took her man to bed. She got her own thing going on. But that's the thing. They, that's what they said. They was like, you know what? We want to come to each other with our problems. We want to be there to talk to our problems. We don't want to hold nothing back. The good, the bad. The whole way through the journal, we see Billy talking about his experiences with Spence coming to live with him. Really helping him mold his future and where he's going. Leading up to ultimately him turning to his wife and that support system that he had of his own. To see how that journal played out and to see Spence dealing with the present of Dion being there. And from the start of the episode before Dion even showed up, it was him and Live Girl in the house. And how every step of the way, she was there with him and Dion, you know, still going through her own stuff. But it kept showing that Live Girl was always by his side. Live Girl was always with him. I see what y'all did there and I, I love it. We have Live Girl who, her book. It, the book is done y'all the book needs to be out but she's afraid to turn it in because she feels like something's missing makes sense right this is something that means something to you something that once it's out there it's it's out there to the world they now have all these stories they have all these memories they have all these feelings and they have something that you most recently had to deal with processing you know your dad's death these wounds that are still fresh just sensitive topics that you're not sure yet if you want to share with the world of who your dad was and all these memories you had with him so for her it's something's missing that's how she's warping all that in her mind to deal with the situation at hand of having to put it out there right now what was missing her letter her letter that brought me to tears y'all oh my gosh let me tell you it's weighing her down y'all it is weighing her pockets down because this here is truly the last words fresh words that you'll have from your dad yeah you'll have all the memories and everything but this is new words coming in and truly feeling a fresh present presence from him that's what this is that's exactly what this letter is giving you right here and now is a new conversation with your dad that you're you're not going to have any more of those unless mom got some other letters hidden or something this is the last of it right here at the end of the day she's finally able to open up this letter and your twin listen here billy <laughs> the fact that they had it so sentimental all these things but still kept the humor in each of them <sighs> i love y'all aa i love y'all so much Just billy talking to his baby girl baby girl y'all know <laughs> he wrote these letters you have these two kids who you don't know but they gotta give you more props it's, you don't know the kind of people they're going to grow up to be like, the futures they're going to have, the lives they're going to live along the way. And the fact that we're at this point in time with them and these letters hit so close to home is insane. Like it was so good. She had me tearing. He had me tearing because he spoke the whole way through. That's the thing. Everybody else, they was getting like in and outs, in and outs. He spoke the whole way through her letter. They said you were going to be present right here. I tell y'all, it got me. From man's telling her that she's destined for greatness to just believing in herself and that there's going to be times where she doubts herself. And we've seen many, many times over the years that she has doubted herself, you know, to just taking that and running with it and knowing that he's always going to be with her. And also just having to share her light with the world and share who she is with the world. And I feel like that was a big part of her now being able to release his story because now you get to share his light with the world you get to share who he was as a person with the world she got this sense of completion she got this sense of validation from him of knowing that where you're at right now and what it is you're doing the work that you've done in yourself you're true to who you are right now as a person and that's all that matters and that's why homegirl goes and puts it out there right it all just came full circle of you know i just want to feel his presence i didn't get to say goodbye that broke me when she told spence her expressing to him that she never got a proper goodbye to her dad because he died so sudden you didn't get to fully process his death you didn't get to, get to fully process saying goodbye to him or even fully process you having to do life without him because you envisioned him there for so many things and now you have to talk about him in past tense write about him in past tense and now live off of memories instead of being able to really create these new memories with him she's had so many things to deal with and to have her and spence be able to be there for each other and 
share in these these things that they're going through with each other and to just feed off of one another stop the way she was crying now samantha girl samantha girl let me tell you you touched me you reached you grabbed on to me and you pulled them heartstrings and you locked on i was locked in lay 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 no no we get lily girl in therapy right the way they stripped her back to here in a ponytail the makeup is very minimal she in a chill outfit i said she won't take the help she won't get the, with this <laughs> with this outfit she is here for the help she is ready she said you know what i gotta be so comfortable because i know everything else inside of me is gonna be locked up tight so at least on the outside i can just be appear relaxed with how i look how i come across and everything and she's sitting there we knew it wasn't gonna be easy we no look who we dealing with i took one look at that doctor i said this the one this is this is our breakthrough right here she gonna help us <laughs> the girl wasn't trying to help she said no way you're not touching my engagement it is not jordan he is the best thing that ever happened to me i was like girl he is he is but we need to touch on it because honestly though that's why they jumped us ahead for a year because they knew it was that engagement that engagement really it was a turning point for us we because when we came back a year later a year three months later it was it was a struggle you know she wasn't trying to do much he was the one that was really pushing we see her kind of closing off to a lot of things and just focusing mostly on business at the time so i said if she want to touch the engagement let that girl let her please let her let that girl wasn't going for it another thing that comes up is mama monica and I, that might have to change because that's a lot of m's going on there it's I right, though, Mama Monica and her depression and everything. Layla girl is, I also feel like she's closed off in this moment because yes, yeah, she's here. She wants to help and everything, but it's too painful trying to open up all those doors. It's too painful. And because of where we saw her and George's engagement led back to, she wants to take the step. She wants to be better, not only for herself, but for her and George's relationship, for Jor as well, and just for people around her. But for her, it's you have to now forcibly and willingly put yourself through these painful memories in order to make yourself better in the present, you know? And that's something that she's struggling with going back to because she doesn't want to relive those memories. Yes, she wants to be better now, but having to relive those painful memories of the past that she's tried so much to shut out and so hard to shut out. She said, nah, mm -mm, now hold up because the love is so real though. She loved this man down. Like she loved this man like no other. This therapist was like, all right, hold on. She kind of, <laughs> she kind of trying to chew my head up. I got to tread carefully here. She recommend Lily Girl try some EMDR, right? Another course, another course of action because Lily Girl, she she never really responded too well to the first course. It's Lily Girl being on board as long as you ain't trying to nitpick my engagement. That is one thing <laughs> I ain't about to allow. Off limits, we ain't going there, girl. So the doc, doc is smart. Doc said, you know what? You don't want me to go there. I'm gonna make you go there on your own. We're gonna do this EMDR over here and that's how we're gonna get there. So you on board, Lily Girl, she'll know what she in for. Let me tell y'all why it will forever be Jor, why no one else has ever worked for her, why they're engaged, why they're getting married, why they're staying engaged, y'all. Why she chose him. This is her person. She comes to the beach house. Why they there? Because she she's not trying to deal with nobody. She going through a lot right now. She ain't got she ain't got no energy for no one else. I mean, it's just happy to see her. It's the fact that she questions him on why he proposed to her in the first place. There's no shock on his face by the question. Nothing. It, he don't look like he got slapped in the face. He don't look like he's shocked to hear the question in the first place. He he knows that she's going to therapy and that she's trying to process everything, process her feelings, process her depression, process her meds, process just everything that's going on with her life right now. And he is just there to support. He is there to love her regardless. He is there to ultimately have her walking down the aisle to him. My mans took the question and just answered it as it is. Like it was just a normal conversation that they were having. Like she ain't just question. <laughs> like she ain't just question why this man put a rock on her finger. He said, because I love you. I wasn't doing it because I had fear of losing you. There was no other reason except for the simple fact that I love you. You're the love of my life. And I know that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Continuing, she then questions. I said that she is just hidden, hidden. And she is, she ain't coming across aggressive either. She's just tired. She's just going through it. And she is trying to help herself in any way that she can. So if having these answers is going to help her to get to that solution, Girl, go ahead and ask him. Ask him, because he's taking them good. She questions my man about also proposing to Simone. You were 
engaged to Simone before and you loved her did you love her the same way you love me or you know did she do something to make things change that's why you ended the engagement and the way he's looking at her this is why i'm like yo jor jor my guys you will forever be my guy for her because again he's just sitting there y'all he's just sitting there taking the questions and just looking at her trying to, you can tell he's processing what she's saying as she's saying it not looking like he got slapped he ain't looking shocked because they're working through this together it's just sitting there like waiting for her to get through this you know to talk through this so that way he can reassure her before they're even officially together this man has been there for her he's been waiting for her you can tell he's always watched her always wanted her so he wants what's best for her what was it up with no i i fell in love with you and that's why i ended things with simone that that though because he didn't fall in love after they were together i said jor jor are you confirming to me because i was like mm, season four i said y'all in love y'all love each other down bad by the time he said he confessed season four and he was like i have feelings for you layla he was already in love in love with her the whole time i knew with jor fast forward now she's tired she's still trying to work through things and she believes him we know she believes what he's telling her but in her mind it's like all right i already have those questions out of my head so now i know i need to do more work in order to better help myself i gotta get back to that office and that's what she does she gets back there she starts the emdr she starts going through the memories of her mom and her depression and what that was like for her when they showed that little girl running, I said, not baby Jayla. We get her running, right? She run into the room. She ain't trying to go up in the room. The therapist is over here telling her, girl, you need to force your way up in there. You know what is happening up in that room. And you're you're trying to avoid it. You need to go in there because it's going to help you to get rid of that block. To really see what it is that's holding you back right now in the present. She forced her way up in there. It was dumb. I said, no, not my people. It was dumb, but it wasn't really dumb. It's her memory of her parents. And she as a kid had to sit there and watch that. She had to just take it and live with it and see it happen time and time again. Up until her losing her mom and ha her having to block out all of these memories. Do you realize you're going through the same thing? The depression that your mom went through, how hard it's been on you, especially from your teen years going into your adult years now. And it's just a constant struggle for you. And you have this person who they're here and they wanna be here and they're trying to help you along the way, but something is still just holding you back we find out that it's the memory of her dad not really being able to help her mom her mom didn't want to be helped she didn't know how to take the help we get like girl she come back too and she's like i see it i know what it is doc <laughs> and she gotta go to her man right this she took it she took the realization and this is where I said, we've come so far with this girl and we know that this is a person for her because she didn't even run away. That's the thing. Every single time, she always makes her way back to Jordan. No matter what it is they're going through, she makes her way back to him. In the lounge, when Paige was like, you know, you need to make things right for him. And then the girl was telling Joy, you need to go make things right with her. She was on her way out. We know she was going to see her man, but he just got to that lounge first. New Year's, we see homegirl. She done made her way to the beach house, waiting out back for her man and in this episode which was so big for her character we see the first time she's in the therapist's office and she leaves there she comes to him to speak to him because she feels safe with him she feels comfortable with him she feels loved in a way by him that she has never felt in any way before and to come back now where you finally have this huge breakthrough you realize what it is and instead of you going somewhere trying to like you know process more thoughts on your own or work through some things on your own or you know just sit with it for a little bit on your own no she said i'm gonna go find my boo and she made her way right back to that couch y'all it's the way they're able to have these mature conversations we both want the solution to end with them being together them being married finding a way to process what it is she's going through together in a way that's helpful for their relationship and helpful for her i gotta i gotta commend jor on his patience i gotta commend jor on how calm he is on his love thank you because she had never been loved like this before my god somehow her dad never really knew how to help her mom and yeah he tried in the past but nev nothing ever really stuck he was the one who was left feeling not really loved because of her parents their relationship mom's depression dad struggling to even be there for her mom so how could he really be there for me when he couldn't even be there to help her in her darkest periods it's jor sitting here the whole time taking it listening and processing and when my man sat here and tried to give her an out 
He's a good man, Savannah. He's a good man, Savannah. I love them so much. No, man's tried to give her an out because he loves her, because he wants what's best for her. Because if this is going to lead you down a dark path to where you don't know what your future is going to look like in a positive light, you don't see this going in a positive direction. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for us. I don't want whatever is not going to lead to a positive, healthy life for you. She took that process. I was like, I already know this is the man for me. I'm just saying that just solidifies for me that I am making the right choice because homegirl continues and is assuring my man that they are not going to be like her parents. They are nothing like her parents because she actually does want the help. You know, it's not like she's trying so hard to fight it because she wants to stay depressed. She wants to find something that works for her. It's not like he's trying and he keeps trying the same thing of, come on, you gotta get out of bed. Come on, you gotta do this. He's actually trying to, find my man's knew what EMDR stood for. He looked it up for his woman so he can know how to better help his woman. They are so better off than her parents ever were. And that's the thing. That's why she was like, you know what, boo? She don't regret saying yes to his engagement. I already knew it, but thank you, Olivia, for letting him know because he was trying to give you an out. You let your man know. Now nah, I'm here. I'm here for forever. My man meant it when she said yes. She loves him. Oh, the I love yous. The I love yous. Stop. Them I love yous just took me out. I was like, nah. I know what it is. It's them reassuring each other, him letting her know, regardless of what it is you choose, I'm still going to be here for you. I'm still going to support you. No matter what it is, whether we walk down that aisle or not, whether you give that ring back or not, she ain't giving it back. And it's her now reassuring him that I want to marry you. I want to walk down that aisle with you. I want the future. I want the kids. I want everything that involves you because you have always been here. He has always been there in the back supporting until he could actually come forward and truly be that person for her and truly have her accept him being that person for her he is too he never rushes he is never pushing her to go faster than she needs to like i said when he proposed to her she could have said no the other girl she could have said no she said yes because she wanted to say yes she wants to marry him but he knows this man is whipped that is it if this girl tell him no for something she was holding the keys from him a couple of weeks ago he was stuck at that cabin because she wouldn't let him leave so for her telling him you know she just needs more time until they actually do get married he taking it. That's it. He like, all right, cool. As long as we walking down that aisle, this wedding, this wedding is going to eat. This wedding is about to be insane. The vows are about to be crazy because I told you my man with his words. And now Lily girl, the way she just be speaking to him and how soft she be talking to him. She ain't never been this soft before. And he done brought all this softness out of her. And I'm just like, they are so in love. They be putting us through it. But when we be winning, we be winning because look at them so in love. The hug, yo, these hugs these hugs be taking me out she is rapping with her whole body because again this is her safety net hold me boo he said come here baby girl the way they just be on each other y'all the hugs is on another level so much more not even intense it's it's so much more emotional now like you can feel everything in these hugs like you you have all of me trying to pour into you what you pour into me is what these hugs be given Let's take all of me here you go and they just be Mm, locked in this is so good we only have what what episode was this like eight or something i think we only have like five i don't even know i ain't even about to be checking i ain't checking to see how many episodes we got left i don't i'm not gonna hurt myself like that you know what too because before i was like mm, i want to see a, a wedding next season i want to see a wedding next season they can give it to me this season here give it to me like season season finale i don't want it before that though give it to me like season finale and I'll be all right with that because I just need a slow progression leading up to it. I'm mentally preparing myself for a time jump. I'm prepared for it. So now that we've worked through so much of the proposal stuff and the engagement and her work through her depression, I will be okay with the time jump at the end since you done sat here and did me a whole year and three months at the beginning. I will take... I will, I will take one at the end, maybe like six months. Give me like a six month time jump at the end of the season and... Let it be the whole episode. I want it to be at the top, like you did me this season here. Be at the top of the episode, six month time jump, and have it be them now getting ready to walk down the aisle together. And I want to see every single step of the way. But that'd be great, y'all. Thank you very much. Y'all been doing so good so far. So I know whatever you give me, it's gonna be good. <laughs> but that is everything for this week, y'all. And I will see you all next time. Peace.